And then you just have to keep in mind, when you use that FFT, you better know that the FFT is doing the shifting. You could ask, well, why not, why did, why make it sh why not shift it back? Why, why make me shift it back? Because a lot of times when you're doing computation, you're not going to necessarily go look at the spectrum all the time. You, the reason it stays shifted is because, remember, speed is everything. Speed is everything in terms of the computing. You want, if you've got, if you got in log n speed, you don't want to add, you know, stuff on top of it. You can do that on your own time. When it's computing, keep it at n log n. Fast. Okay? In my last class I taught in last quarter, 581, I always tell people, you may get the right answer. But it's wrong if you did it the slow way. Okay? Part of computing now is not just about, oh, I can compute and I got this really, I got this method that can compute it right. It's not about that anymore. It's about not only can I compute it right, I can compute it faster than you. Well, okay, it's not that. It's not that, I guess, uh, you know, uh, competitive, but, uh, but I, uh, you know, it, it kind of is. If you're trying to write a paper in this area, that's what you're trying to say, actually, all the time. It's like, oh, I can compute this faster than you can, and here's why. Okay, that's, that's how you write a paper in scientific computing. You tell people how much awesomer you are. Okay? All right. But see, the nice thing is with your data analysis skills, you might be working, I don't know, in atmospheric sciences or ge uh, geology or something. With your skills, you'll be able to say how much better you are also. See, then, I'll, then we will have all won. Okay? All right. So there you go. Uh, that's the simple implementation. Now I'm going to use it to do a trick. Okay? Yes? So the actual coefficients are positive and negative alternating. This is... Yeah, so I plotted the absolute yeah. value. Okay. This is the absolute value. If it's complex, you know, most people, by the way, when you get a complex spectrum, what you normally do, what people call the power spectrum, I don't know if you've heard this, okay? Well, uh, that's an aggressive word, just like the competition. It's all, it's all like smackdown for comp computing. So uh, the power spectrum is always the absolute value of the spectral content, because that's what you want to know, is how much frequency content, not necessarily what phase it's in, okay? All right, so there's that. And now, for my next trick, I will differentiate a function. Computationally, ready? I don't know if you guys are ready. Let's, can I have the lights on real quick up front? There's this very nice relationship. That's actually worked out in the notes. Which says the following. It says the following. The hat represents Fourier transform, by the way. And this represents the nth derivative. If I take the nth derivative of a function, and I want to find what that is, the Fourier transform of the nth derivative is the same as taking the function itself and Fourier transforming it and multiplying by ik to the nth power. Okay? So if I want to compute the third derivative, all I've got to do is take the function, Fourier transform it, Multiply this by ik cubed, inverse Fourier transform it. That's it. By the way, this is one of the most, if, if the boundary conditions work for you, like here, the boundaries go to zero, right? And this is supposed to be a periodic function, but here the boundaries are pretty much going to zero. This is probably one of the most accurate ways you can compute a derivative, spectrally accurate. Okay? So let's compute a derivative. And here's the thing I'm going to compute. Uh, oh, actually, we can go back with the lights down. Okay. So I'm going to take this function u here, uh, and I'm going to do the following function. Here's my favorite function, hyperbolic secant x. I don't know if you have a favorite function yet. It's just a little bit of time before you graduate to pick one out. This one's taken, by the way. Don't even try. Uh, and by the way, its derivative, it's called ud, is such times tanch. Now what I'm going to do is trying to compute that derivative accurately. And by the way, second derivative, let's call it ud2 for a second derivative, will be such x minus 2 times such x cubed. Uh, something like that, pretty close. I think I actually have it in the notes here. Uh, sorry, give me just a second here. Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, that's right. Okay. 
Um, and what I'm going to do is now compute these derivatives using my Fourier transform. So let me bring it to the top. There's u, second derivative, first derivative. And first of all, if I want to calculate the derivatives, first I have to have the Fourier transform of the function. There it is. And I'm going to calculate now the first derivative. Okay? So to calculate the first derivative, remember what I've got to do is take i times k and multiply it by the Fourier transform. There it is. And then what I've got to do with this is inverse Fourier transform it. Right? Because what this is is the derivative of the, uh, it's the Fourier transform of the first derivative. So what I can do is just say, okay, if I want the first derivative, let's call it my UD uh, S for spectral approximations, first derivative spectral, is IFFT. By the way, uh, that's how you invert a Fourier transform. IFFT and FFT, they're, they're pairs. Okay? And by the way, the second derivative, let's call it UD2 S is equal to IFFT of I. Uh, times k, that thing squared now, times ut. There we go. Oh, uh, I, I wanted to call this u, right? So I'm kind of done. So let's make some plots. I'm going to plot here uh, the function. Uh, and for shorthand, I'm going to say call it ks for k shift will be the fft shift of k. And so that way I can make this be just, first I'm going to plot the function, and then I'm going to plot, in addition to the function, I'm going to plot uh, the derivative of the function, so x versus ud, and my approximation. Let's plot that in a red line, and then I'm going to plot my approximation to the derivative, uds, and I'll plot that with magenta circles. What I'm plotting is here is the exact answer right there. X, U, D. That's the exact answer. And I'm plotting my approximation to the exact answer. Oh, that's just the original function. We don't have to have that in there. Would you like to take it away? We could just do that. What's that? Oh, that was the FFT. Yeah, we don't want the FFT, the original function. We just want the function. Oh, by the way, there you go. Look at that. The red line is exact. The magenta line is my approximation. Who likes that approximation? Give it up, y'all. OK, so listen, I know it's the first day of class. You're just warming up. We'll have a dance party about midway. We can get disco balls. And you, know, you shine that light on there. It's pretty sweet. OK. All right, uh, so there's my approximation. By the way, let's zoom in a little bit. Let's just see how well we really did. Let's see how long it takes for that magenta ball to fall off. Oh, 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 oh. Come on, fall off. I'm zooming in, I'm zooming in, I'm zooming in. Look, it's pretty dang accurate. Look at that. Oh, it's finally coming off there. I know I can sense it. Oh, look at that. But look over here on the left. It's like down to 10 minus 5 or negative 6. Pretty amazing accuracy. Now, you can screw up. Let me just show you one other thing. Suppose I take a smaller domain. Oh, not quite. Hold on, a little smaller. Just real quick. Just give me two seconds for the final... Okay, come on. Let's do four. I, I want to I I show you what happens when you kind of start to violate. Yeah, there you go. You start seeing it. Now, notice what happens here. Here, remember, it's supposed to be a 2 pi periodic function, right? This is clearly not periodic. Before, they both went to zero. You could say it kind of looks pretty periodic. Here, it's up here at above 0.2. Here, it's below negative 0.2. There's a jump. And any time you have a jump in a Fourier uh, transform, when you try to represent it, you get what's called a Gibbs phenomena, which are oscillations near the jump. And this is what you see over here. So it does amazingly well here. And over here, it starts to oscillate. Not so well. OK, we're going to use this on Friday to do radar problems. OK, have a good uh, Wednesday. See you guys soon.